Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Conversational AI with Vasa series. My name is Yuste, and I'm extremely excited to continue your developer education journey with you. In this video, we will talk about entities. Entities are the pieces of information that your assistant can extract from user inputs. Those details can help your assistant to better understand what is being asked and later on use those details in a specific context when responding back to the user or running specific actions. The most common examples of entities are details like numbers, dates, country names, and similar. But an entity can really be any kind of piece of information that is relevant and important to your assistant. For example, for a flight booking assistant, it would be really useful to know which detail in user's input is a destination. That's why in this example where the user says that they would like to book a ticket to Sydney, Sydney is being extracted as an entity of a type destination. Now, a quick note on how the training data for entity extraction should look like and where should it be stored. The training data for entity extraction should be stored inside of your nlu.yaml file. Now, how this data should be labeled? It's a very simple convention. The word that should be extracted as an entity should be surrounded by square brackets, and then next to it, you should include the label to this entity inside of the parentheses. There are a few ways of how entities can be extracted using Rasa. Different methods work best for specific entity types, but the most common approach that we see being used by developers is using a mix of different methods to achieve the best results. Let's talk about those methods one by one. The first approach is using pre-built models. Rasa enables you to use pre-built models to enhance the entity extraction results without requiring you to have loads of labeled data. For example, a tool called Duckling is an extremely powerful approach for extracting entities like numbers, dates, URLs, email addresses, and similar. The best part about Duckling is that it requires no training data for your assistant to extract those details. Another really powerful library, Spacey, enables you to use pre-built models to enhance the entity extraction for details like person names, locations, and similar. To enable your Rasa assistant to use pre-built models, all you have to do is reference those models in your NLU model configuration file. We will talk about those details in the later episodes of the series. Another approach for extracting entities with Rasa is using regex. Regex allows you to define a specific pattern that the entities you would like to extract should follow. It means that regex is the best approach for extracting entities that follow a specific deterministic pattern, for example, user IDs and similar details. To enable your Rasa assistant to use regex, you will have to define the regex pattern and include it in your nlu.yaml file, in addition to a few training examples for that specific entity. Don't forget to name the entity you would like your assistant to extract the same way as you named your regex pattern. And last but not least, the third approach for extracting entities with Rasa is using machine learning. If some of the entities that you would like your assistant to extract don't have pre-built models, or if they don't follow a specific pattern, so using regex is not really an option, you should use machine learning to extract those entities. Machine learning models are very powerful for extracting what we call custom entities. To extract entities using machine learning models, you will need some training data. In fact, you will need a lot more training data than for previous approaches. But the more good quality training data you have, the better results you will achieve. Rasa comes with a few machine learning models that you can use and train on your own training data. For example, one of the most powerful models for entity extraction is Rasa's diet classifier. When extracting entities using machine learning models, there are lots of things that are happening under the hood, and there are quite a few things you have to take into account when building those models. We will talk about this topic a lot more in the later episodes of the series when we will dive deeper into the NLU model pipeline configurations. When entities are extracted, under the hood, Rasa produces an output in a JSON format. 
that output is rich in detail about what kind of entity has been extracted, what is the value of that entity and where in a sentence that detail was found, and also what method or a model has been used for extracting this detail. So for example, here you can see an entity city being extracted with a value New York City, and the method that has been used for extracting this entity is diet classifier. In addition to just extracting entities, Rasa comes with a few additional features that can help you enhance the entity extraction even more. Let's talk about them. The first one is called synonyms. Synonyms allow you to map extracted entity value to a value different than the one extracted. Now, where this is useful? In some cases, users will refer to the same thing using lots of different terms. But you, as a developer, you will want to use the values of the entities for, let's say, querying the database or making API calls or using those details for something else. This means that you will need the extracted entity values to be normalized and maybe mapped under one specific value. And this is exactly what you can achieve with synonyms. There are two ways of how synonyms can be added to your Raza Assistant. One of them is by adding a new section to your nlu.yaml file called synonym. You have to define the actual value that extracted values will have to be mapped to. And then you have to provide examples of how users might refer to that specific synonym. The second approach of adding synonyms to your Raza Assistant is by adding them in line with your NLU training examples. All you have to do is add another parameter called value which will reference the value that extracted entities will have to be mapped to. A very important note about synonyms. Synonym mapping happens after entities are extracted, which means that you will need some training data to enable your assistant to extract entities first. Another very powerful feature of RASA is lookup tables. Lookup tables are lists of words that can be used to generate case-sensitive regular expression patterns. With lookup tables, you can enhance entity extraction for details that have a set of known possible values. For example, you can use lookup table to enhance the entity extraction for country names. To achieve that, include a list of all countries in the world in your nlu.yaml file under the section lookup. And the last very powerful feature of RASA for entity extraction is entity roles and groups. If you are building an assistant for flight booking or something similar, you will quickly realize that you will want to add additional details for specific entities. For example, if the user says that they would like to book a ticket from New York to Boston, in a very simple scenario, your assistant will extract New York and Boston as an entity location. But for your assistant to be natural in how it responds and in general to be able to run necessary actions to book a ticket, your assistant will have to distinguish which detail is the origin, which one is the destination. You can enable your assistant to do that by defining entity roles. To do that, you will have to include additional parameter called role to your entity labeled data and define which role a specific entity should correspond to. Entity groups allow you to group specific entities under a specific category. So for example, in a pizza booking assistant, you can enable your assistant to group specific toppings corresponding to a specific order. An important thing about entity roles and groups is that you have to include quite a few different examples for your assistant to really learn. So make sure to include different examples of different variations of roles and groups. Entity roles can also be configured to influence the flow of the conversation. To do that, you will have to include roles in your training data stories, just like you see in the example here, and also reference them in your domain file. Entities are extremely important pieces of information that can enable your assistant to better understand what is being asked and enable your assistant to use them later on in a specific context. We will dive even deeper into the topic of collecting the information and using it in a specific context in the later episodes of the Conversational AI with Rasa series. I hope I'll see you there.